I say IQ test to you, you probably know it's a series of logic questions, and at the end you get a score. It's a measure of intelligence, with the average IQ score being 100, and the higher the score, the more intelligent you're supposed to be. With most people having a score close to 100, and a very few, very unusual people, having exceptionally high scores or exceptionally low scores. When we display the number or frequency of people getting each score on a graph, what we find is it forms a bell shape. This is a really common distribution of data and it's called a normal distribution. And in this video we'll discuss normal distributions as well as distributions that look like this, called skewed distributions. Psychboost.com, over 170 videos to help you with your qualification and Patreon supporters can access bonus resources, tutorial videos and the Discord channel. Normal distributions. So after collecting data about the frequency of some continuous factor, it can be displayed on a graph that shows its frequency. This is known as a histogram, with the up and down y axis representing frequency and the side to side x axis showing the value of the scores. Sometimes the spread of scores can show no pattern, but sometimes the spread can be more scores on one side or the other. Sets of data that show this distinctive bell curve are what's known as a normal distribution, and you can tell it's a normal distribution because the two sides of the curve are symmetrical. The same on both sides. And the mean, the median and the mode are all at the top in the center of the curve. The sides of the curve don't touch the x-axis, as they are always theoretically could be extremely small or large scores. The mode will always be at the top of the curve as the mode is the most common or frequent score. The median is the middle score, so as the curve is symmetrical you'll have 50% of the scores on each side of the highest point, with the same amount of area under each side. And the extreme scores of each side balance out, keeping the mean in the centre. Now let's consider the normal distribution in terms of IQ again. So the most frequent score is 100, and as each side of the curve is symmetrical, someone's as likely to have a score of 99 as 101, or as likely to score 85 as 115. Most of the scores are close to the centre. In fact, when data is normally distributed, we can say how far a particular score is from the mean by stating its standard deviation. 68% of scores are within one standard deviation, 95% within two standard deviations, and 99.7% are within three standard deviations. So let's imagine someone gained a score of 130 on an IQ test. They're in the top 2.5% of the population, as they are two standard deviations from the mean. And only 5% of people are two standard deviations from the mean, and half of them are on the lower end of the scale. For example, people with an IQ of 70 are just as rare. And this is very important to consider for psychologists, as we may define abnormality as someone who is statistically infrequent, and use statistics as a tool, like providing support for people who have an IQ two standard deviations below the mean. Skewed distributions. So we've looked at the standard distribution in detail, but we can also get distributions in which the scores are shifted to one side, with a long tail either to the right or to the left. This stops the graph from being symmetrical. If the long tail on the graph is pointing to the right, then it's a positive skew, and if the tail is pointing to the left, then it's a negative skew. That makes it easy to remember which way around each of these graphs go. You just need to think about what side of the number line the tail is pointing to to remember what skew it is, positive for positive, negative for negative. So how could these skews happen? Well imagine a well constructed test. You'd hope that if a large number of people took this test, a few people would do really well, and a few badly. But most people would score around the middle, a standard distribution. But imagine if we made all the questions super easy, barely an inconvenience. Then you would find most people would get high scores and there will be fewer low scores. This would be a negative skewed distribution. And if we made the test really hard, then most of these scores would be really low with only a few high scores. This would be a positive distribution. Positive and negative skews also change where the measures of central tendency will be on the graph. The mode will always be the highest point on the graph as it's the most frequent score. The mean is affected by extreme scores and so it's pulled towards the tail of the graph. And the median, being the central number, is in between the mode and the mean at the point where there's 50% of an area under the graph on both sides. I have 8 tutorial videos covering the AS and A level research method sections from 2017 to 2020. These videos have worked examples to every question and are full of exam tips. Patrons at the neuron level and above can access these and many many more hours of exam tutorial videos. 
as well as over 100 printable resources from across the A-level over on PsyBoost.com. I do want to thank all the students and teachers who have supported PsyBoost over on Patreon during the development of the Research Methods Unit. It's their support that allows me to teach part-time so I can make PsychBoost on YouTube for everyone. I also want to give a special shout out to the patrons who support me at the developer level. So thanks to them and I'll see you all in the next Research Methods video.